On this episode of Smoke Signals, we look at the new features in Smoke 2013 pre-release Trial 3. We also discuss the Scruffy Smoke Challenge with Kane and Flowers. Now I'm here with Kane and Flowers, the creative director behind Scruffy TV, that post show, and formerly that media show now called The Scruffy Show. The Scruffy Show, yep. And you like smoke. I do, I do. I like smoke quite a lot. I haven't been using it very long, as you know, about maybe four months total, six, six weeks of which have, have been very serious for me and actually when I've been integrating it into my production pipeline. So I do a show, I release it every week. If you consider each uh, shot that was modified in some way to create you know, a 3D background or some kind of motion graphic. So there are about 300 visual effects shots in each one. So I, I like to say that the Scruffy Show is the kind of pr project that Smoke was designed to tackle. So it's got green screen, it's got compositing, it's got 3D visual effects in there, you've got color correction, you've got titling, but you're all doing it on a really tight budget with run-of-the-mill equipment. So we came up with the Scruffy Smoke Challenge. We want you guys to actually get your hands on some of Kanan's footage from the Scruffy Show and Try it out yourselves. There are shots of an upcoming episode of The Scruffy Show, a little interstitial, a little segment, because we do these fun episodes, uh, these fun skits or sketches, depending on what part of the country you're from. And it's for one called Malcolm Gladwell, Zombie Killer. This is my tipping point. This is what the dog saw. <laughs> you know, if you don't get sued for that, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have a lot of opportunity uh, because we're doing a parody, right? In the same way that Saturday Night Live or Mad TV yep. or someone like that does. But Malcolm Gladwell, Zombie Killer, there's, you know, something yeah. something to say about there's, that. There's something, I think there's probably something in there that Gladwell might not approve of. <laughs> then again, he might. He might. Maybe it's Malcolm Gladwell, Social Analyst and Zombie Killer. <laughs> So the show is shot on a couple of different systems. Um, they're all Canon cameras right now, at least for the challenge footage. It's all shot on a green screen. And sometimes it's handheld and sometimes it's stationary. We have tracking markers in the background. It's all at uh, ProRes 422 at 1080p, 24 frames per second. So it slides into smoke really easily, which is great. And like, like you said, various levels of complexity. You know, there's Malcolm Gladwell, who has quite a lot of hair, which is sometimes hard to key. There are tracking markers, a lot, of, a lot of moving camera, and then zombies come in, and then there's a vampire. So they go to scruffysmoke.com, and we have a site set up there. We can download the footage. We're gonna give you six different shots, which is kind of interesting, because you could actually put those six shots together and create kind of a little fun movie of Malcolm Gladwell, a vampire, and some zombies. And, that, and that's, you know, of course, that's just the beginning. The idea is you composite that, you put the backgrounds in it, you send it back to us, and you can send it back to us through YouTube or Vimeo or Dropbox or basically any way that we can essentially get access to it. Right. And the challenge runs, I think we're running it from today as we record this, which is August 22nd. And it ends on, I think we said September 29th. September 29th, so the last week of September. We also have a tutorial that Smoke Guru Ken LaRue put together just for the purpose of the Scruffy Smoke Challenge. And the winner gets... So the winner actually gets a lot of things. First and foremost, they get bragging rights. They won the first Scruffy Smoke Challenge. You heard it here first. The second thing that they get is they get the opportunity to composite the actual show that's going to air on October 10th. And that show has tens of thousands of viewers. But they also get two other things which I think are really compelling as well. They get to be interviewed on Smoke Signals, which is pretty exciting. And they get to be a guest on my other podcast, That Post Show. So obviously there are rules. So we want you to use Smoke 2013. You need to keep your, your smoke set up. You need to keep your cure set up. You need to be able to provide some form of proof that you actually did this in smoke. And actually- Oh, this, well, I'll be able to tell. You'll, you'll be able to tell? All right, so yeah, Kanan is a judge. He was the tiebreaker. I think I'll be the tiebreaker. So you and Ken can argue about the quality of the composite. I'll look at the story. Okay. So That so, makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> so, we're looking forward to see what you guys will provide. Absolutely. And uh, we're looking forward to talking about it all through September on, uh, on our usual social media conduits. And, um, and like MySpace. Uh, like, <laughs> my, yeah, MySpace. Smoke 2013 pre-release trial 3 is now available, and it packs a host of new features and bug fixes. Before you install this new release, 
make sure you read up on how to import your PR2 projects. The Conform tab is now available, letting you relink sequences from other applications to the specified source files. I discussed the Conform tools in a previous episode of Smoke Signals, but I wanted to point out a great new feature. If your timeline exhibits unlinked media files, you can right-click on them and unlink the clips to its missing source media. Then, select the sequence in Media Library and switch to the Conform tab. Simply point the search function to where the media resides and let Smoke do the rest. That's only one of the cool features in the new Conform tab. You can now search for elements in the timeline just by clicking on the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner. You can search by clip name, source name, time code, and a variety of other ways, even by timeline effects category. Pre-release trial 3 also introduces Connect Effects Clips, a powerful way to pre-cache your Connect Effects pipelines and save time. By grouping several nodes together as a Connect Effects Clip, you can render parts of your composite, retime it, and reuse it in other segments of your timeline. At any point, you can expand the Connect Effects Clip to reveal its original nodes, letting you modify any part of the effect. That's just some of the new features in PR3. So to find out more, I invite you to read the release notes on our wiki page and browse the Smoke 2013 forum on the area. Now it's easier to learn Smoke than ever. There are several free tutorials available everywhere on the web. The official Smoke Learning Channel features over 35 lessons, including tutorials on pre-release trial 3. They're available on YouTube and iTunes. You can watch past episodes of Smoke Signals, also on YouTube and iTunes. You can check out smoke-training.com, where Brendan Gibbons shows you all the tips and tricks. Larry Jordan has Getting Started Tutorials. Brian Mulligan has a blog filled with tips and tricks around Smoke 2013 on premiumbeat.com. If you want to master Smoke 2013, head on over to FXPHD and check out their Fast Forward Essentials for Smoke 2013. And coming soon, new tutorials by Ripple Training and Digital Tutors. Be part of the Smoke 2013 community. Get your questions answered on the Smoke 2013 forums on the area where Autodesk technical support specialists such as Robert Adam hang out. Join our Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter. Check out the Creative Cow forums hosted by Walter Biscardi. And follow us on Social Cam. I'm Marc-Andre Ferguson. Thank you for watching.